Well, hey there guys, this is Corinna Bench from Shared Legacy Farms. And in today's video, I wanna teach you the equipment that you might need if you want to start canning. Now, if you're anything like me, 10 years ago when I first married into a farm family, I didn't know anything about how to do canning. In fact, it terrified me. I thought I was gonna poison someone, and I certainly felt overwhelmed by all the different kinds of stuff that you needed to acquire to learn how to do it. But I walked alongside my own mother-in-law and she taught me the ropes and I am here to tell you that it is not hard at all. So in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through the first step, which is figuring out what the equipment is that you need to have in your kitchen if you wanna start canning. So if you wanna download my free guide that shows all the different kinds of equipment for canning, you can go to sharedlegacyfarms.com slash canning checklist and you'll be able to get that PDF. So the first thing that you need to decide is what kind of canner you want to purchase. Now there's a water bath canner, which looks like this, and there's the pressure canner, which is the one that everyone is afraid of. Listen, I'm going to do a separate training all about this guy. Don't worry about this right now. In fact, if you're a beginner canner, you shouldn't buy a pressure canner, but we will review that in another video. Let's talk about this one. This is the water bath canner. It's the best one to start with as a beginner. And when you go and purchase this, this is about $25, and what you get is basically this pot, and then inside of it will be um, an insert in which you put your jars. The next thing you have to invest in are your mason jars. And when you go to the store to buy these for the first time, you'll probably see a big pack like this, or maybe you'll find them at a garage sale. It's another place that I find them a lot too. There are many different sizes. There are quart jars, that's probably the most common size that I use. Um, but I also use a lot of pints for things like pickles or smaller jars of tomatoes if I don't need to use too many tomatoes at once. And then there are even half pints and smaller for your jams and jellies. So just think through what are you gonna use them for and that usually helps you decide what size jar you need. Now before you purchase your jars for the first time, I want you to take a look at the rims. So um, on, the, on my right is a wide mouth rim and on my left is a regular mouth jar. And you can see that it's a little bit smaller. If I could do it all over again, I would purchase only the wide mouth rims. And this is because when you actually do canning, a lot of times you have to get your hand in there to help drain some of the juices out. Or if you're making sauerkraut fermenting, you have to use your fist and pound things in. And you just can't fit your hand inside a regular mouth jar. I really can't think of a reason why this would ever be better in any situation. So if I could coach you on one thing, buy the wide mouth jars from the get-go. Now, mason jars are reusable, so after you've used the product that you can inside them, don't throw them away or recycle them. Save them, wash them out, and put them up into your attic, and you can use them again next year. Now, one of the other things that you're gonna have to purchase as you reuse your jars are the lids and sometimes the rings. Now remember, the first time that you purchase your jars, they come with the band or ring that goes around the top like this, and then they have what's called a lid on the top. And this has a sealing compound that goes around the edge. These can only be used one time, and after they're used, they get thrown away. So when you do your second year of canning and you reuse your jars, Although you can use the rings again, you will have to buy brand new lids. And so that's something that I purchase over and over again every year. It comes in a box like this, and they're pretty reasonable. Again, make sure that you buy the right size lids for the size of your jar. So if you have a wide mouth or a regular mouth, make sure you get the right box. Now I just want to show you, <laughs> this is my giant green tub that I store up in my attic and it has all of my rings in it. And so I just bring this down and when it's time to do my canning, uh, I use my old glasses from mason jars from the year before and then I just got these rings ready to go. But I do have to buy new uh, lids every year. All right, after you've decided on your jars, you're gonna need a whole set of other accessories to do your first batch of canning. And the first thing that you're gonna need is a funnel. So I have a stainless steel one. This one was about $10 on Amazon, but you can also get the plastic ones. Just make sure that it has a special uh, opening like this wide enough 
to fit inside of one of your canning jars. All right, you're also going to need what's called a jar grabber, a jar lifter. And there's a couple of different versions of this on Amazon right now. Um, this is about $6 and it has two ends that are a little confusing to use. One of them has these little black rollers and then the other side has these grippies made of some kind of a rubber. This is the end here, the rubber end, is the part that you're going to grab your jars with when you remove them from the hot uh, pot, all right? You're not going to use the other side. I've seen so many people try to use the roller end and then they slide right off. But this is definitely a tool that you need to remove the jar from the hot pot. And then this is an optional tool, but it's totally worth it in my opinion. It's a jar magnet, and this is going to help you get the lids that are really, really hot out of the pot of boiling water. And you can also use a fork like my mother-in-law does. But you know what, for like three bucks, I think this is totally worth it. Now these three items, if you purchase one of these kits on Amazon where you get the pot and the jar grabber and the funnel and the jar bag all together, you can get them all in one giant kit if you want. Or you can just purchase the pot with the rack separately. All right, the other things that you're gonna need are probably things you have already in your household. You're gonna need some kind of a small saucepan to boil the lids in. You're also gonna need a lint-free cloth to wipe around the jars after you put stuff into them. And you're gonna need, in most cases, some kind of fruit preserver or um, it's called fruit fresh or produce protector. You can either get this stuff from the store or you can use lemon juice. And the recipe will usually tell you how much to put into your jars and that helps uh, protect and preserve the color. It also um, deals with the pH and the acidity of the contents of your jar. And then finally, I'd like to recommend a particular cookbook or recipe book for you. This one sometimes comes in the giant kit when you get everything together. It's called the Blue Book of Preserving. And I think you can buy this separately for like $5. It's got all the basics of how to do candy. And this is the one I would recommend for beginners. There's obviously a ton of other ones out on the market, um, especially the ones that are produced by Ball Canning Company. Uh, but this one is a really good basic beginner book. So there you have it. This is the complete list of canning equipment that you will need for your first batch of canning. Now, if you wanna grab my free checklist that lists all the canning equipment pieces you might need, you can go to sharedlegacyfarms.com slash canning checklist and you'll get this really great PDF guide that lists all of my recommended uh, equipment pieces for canning, along with their Amazon links. Plus, there's also my five top recipes that I think beginners should start with.